disaster. My favorite head torch has a bit of a lithium incident. So I went to use this one day. I use this a lot. It's a very simple head torch. It's got one button the side. It's got a USB charging port. Takes an 18650, which, uh, yeah, there's no real good indication of polarity in this. But it takes an 18650 and can charge that via the micro USB port. And it's got uh, a button at the side that you click to turn it on. And if you click and hold it, the button actually was intermittent. It then ramps up in intensity till you get the right intensity and it will store that so you can just click on, click off. No flashing modes, which is good. It also, if you click it into another mode, it has an infrared receiver and an infrared emitter and it will uh, do that thing, the contact list, that you just wave your hand in front of it to turn it on and off. But I went to use it and it was flat. I thought, oh, that's annoying because I've clearly, you know, left it... Uh, running or something like that and I put it on charge and I thought oh no I'll just change the battery and I took it out and the end of the battery was melted I'm guessing that's the way this goes in or is it this I can't remember which way it goes in that might be part of the problem because uh, the battery is all melted around the positive terminal the other end the heat shrink has actually shrunk up and gone across the little uh, ribbon suggesting there has been a fair amount of heat and the springs and I'm guessing this is a clue here that uh, the springs are sort of, they're a bit sort of firm and not very springy anymore. They've been uh, overheated. And I think a short circuit has occurred between the positive and negative end. Now, I'm wondering if that was because I might have put the battery in one way round, uh, tried it out, it didn't work, and then I put the battery in the other way round, it did work. And I don't know, because I thought I would have noticed that. Ah, the battery would have been hot. I don't know. Anyway, it's a perfect opportunity to take this apart, and I have to say you'll probably see some little uh, gnarly marks around it, because I have wanted to take this apart before, but because it was my main head torch, I didn't want to do that. For a start, let's uh, take a knife. Oh, let's take a knife. I'll make this one more safe by just gently going... Uh, therefore, it's not a dangerous knife anymore. And I shall... Uh, Peel this cover off. I want to actually peel the sleeve off and take a look at the cell. It does appear to still be taking a charge. I don't think it's been ruined. So there's the little insulator. Let's uh, get down on this just a little bit. Get down. Um, tricky. I am seeing signs of corrosion in here. Like this thing may have actually spat out flames. That's a bit disturbing. But you th would have thought it might have, it may have vented. Uh, I'm not really sure. It does look like it's been shorted because I think the contact other end is also looking a bit, yeah, it's looking a bit crusty, right? Okay, I think we're going to have to open this up. So ways this comes apart, this bit unscrews. And when it unscrews, it reveals a standard collimator and that LED on a circuit board in there. There's also this little wedge I'll just zoom out just a tad because, uh, just in case people are watching really huge screens, try and compromise everybody. Uh, you can also see the melting that's happened at the end here. I think I'm pretty sure a lot of the heat has been uh, around these springs, like it has shorted out. And this is where it gets a bit tricky because I think to get the rest off here, I think the only way I'm going to get that out, because this is machined aluminium with a close fitting circuit board at the other end, I think I'm going to have to take the end cap off and that was where I fell foul last time and it just didn't come off I did uh, buy another one of these with the intent of making this video before it went up in smoke but that didn't happen uh, because uh, just too many other videos to make really so many videos to make there's no time to make all the videos I want to make so let's put this in here and see if that's going to... I don't think it's going to unscrew, but you never know. It may be threaded. Is that rotating or not? Hard to say. No, I don't think that is rotating. I wonder if it's wedged on or if it's just glued on. This little thing comes out, so I can pull this out as well. That's tricky. I wonder if it just taps off. This is where it could get noisy. If it gets too noisy, I will. Uh, I may have to actually go somewhere I can use suitable force in this. Is this going to defeat me? How is this actually fixed on? 
I reckon it may be glued, um, which means I may have to apply some heat to this. Right, tell you what, I'm going to see if I can find a blowtorch. Well, that didn't work. So next up is the Dremel. There's got to be some easy way to open this, but I'm not really sure what it is. I shall find out in due course. I'm going to start uh, just basically slicing along here. And to spare your hearing, I'll just pause momentarily. Okay. I'm not sure what's holding that in. There is a spring clip has popped out here. Could that have been as very much a one-way trip? And latched. There's nothing really obvious, nor is there anything super obvious. Well, there is now. There's a big notch designed to stop that rotating. I get the feeling it may have been glued on, and it was just uh, very resilient to uh, to being uh, even being heated. But anyway, it's off. The circuit board actually popped out. The circuit board actually goes in like this. Uh, then that plastic sh uh, sleeve goes in to pack it in from the other end. Yep. Like, like, can I even do it? Like that, to lock that in. And then the end cap goes on. Yeah, interesting construction. And then the lens in the front. But um, what I'm seeing here is there's nothing super of. There is one connection, a sooty connection, from the USB port here. There's a, a slightly burnt connector down there. It looks as though it may have actually been a factor in that. I don't like the fact that in this design, when you put a battery in, I'm trying to remember which end's positive and which end's negative. Uh, it makes a connection onto the outside plate here. Nothing really obvious. It would have been nice to have some sort of indication of which way the battery went in, apart from the one that doesn't produce smoke. And I'm pretty sure that uh, when I first got this, I put the battery in the wrong way around. Uh, let's uh, test that. Let's put the uh, bench power supply on. So I'll ramp that down to about, say, 4 volts. Um, in fact, I'll actually put it lower voltage. Uh, just ramp up and see if the current goes through the roof, because then I'll know I've got it wrong way around. So I'm pushing this way down to about 0 volts. Let's get the circuit board. I'm going to connect negative to the case and positive to that spring, that slightly crispy spring. I'm going to turn the voltage up. No, it's not drawing high current. 4 volts. Click the button. Oh, so it's still working. Um, for reference, when it's turned on, it draws about 760 milliamps at 4 volts. So, that means that one thing I really disliked about this is that the that spring there is not really what you'd call central. Now do the channel's offset. Hold on, let me just slip that back in. If I can slip it back in. Oh, I suppose actually, you know, the spring isn't too bad. It is fairly close to the position. I really don't know what's shorted out here. The thing is working its mystery short circuit. What happens if I crank it up with the polarity the wrong way around? Let's stick this down to a low voltage. Let's put the negative on here and the positive on here. And I'll crank the voltage up again to see what happens. So voltage going up. Uh, 1.35 volts, it's drawing. Ooh. Lots of current. So, going up for about 4 volts, it's drawing. An amp is coming from somewhere in there. It's not happy. So it does kind of short out the battery. Uh, but an amp wouldn't necessarily have caused that problem with the contacts. I get the feeling that... Uh, I know it was getting hot there. Hmm. I get the feeling something has happened that's shorted out. I do see the tracks going down behind here that suggest that because this housing is uh, grounded, it uh, is negative, this USB charge port. I wonder if something has shorted onto the case. Very hard to say. Oh, I'm seeing a skid mark, a scorch mark down here on the colouring, so I'm wondering if then... Hold on, no, that's cut out, so you can't really short that out. 
No, it's got this little uh, channel here to try and stop any of those connections shorting out against the case. Although, having said that, the circuit board itself pushes up against... Oh, well, there's a clue. I wonder if because it's pressed up against the aluminium that just over time it's just, with wear and tear, it's just eventually made a connection from that side because it's relying on the anodization to actually insulate the circuit board from that with all those connections. It does seem to go quite close. Yeah, the circuit board sits hard against the metal. That's a bit creepy. Oh, I'm going to say that's most likely cause then. That they've been relying on the anodization as an insulator um, and the plated through holes. Something has possibly made a connection onto that, particularly with the little brown skid mark underneath there. Nothing really obvious in terms of where the path of the heat has gone. Hmm, hard to say. Uh, right, I'm just going to do one more test with a thermal imaging camera. So the component that's getting hot in this, the one that's shorting out is this little transistor type thing here. It might be a voltage regulator, it could be a transistor. And it is getting really hot. It's reaching 120 degrees Celsius, and that's with the current limit on the bench supply going about 0.6 amps. And I think uh, it would have shorted out a lot more if I'd uh, cranked the voltage up a bit here. Let's uh, crank the voltage up a bit. As the voltage goes up, the current's kind of going back down again. It's at 10 volts now. It's, it's not happy. It's not doing much, though. It's just getting hot. The current's gone down. It's, it's just gone. It's just cut out. It's failed. Oh, that's a bit disappointing. That's not what's supposed to happen. It's supposed to go bang. But uh, that's it. Now, I will say another thing that I've noticed here is that if I bring in the continuity tester and I put it on the uh, meta work here, that suspicion I had about the anodization inside, not being enough to keep things like the solder pads away from the casing. It's all right if you're on the anodization, but as soon as you creep off it onto the edge of the actual, where it's been machined out in there, it is conductive. So there's really not much separation between the circuit board itself, this face of it, and uh, the plated through holes in that, and the actual uh, metal here, any ridge in there could actually have cut into that. But I'm not seeing any obvious sign of scorching on that. I'm not seeing any sign of heat, but it has been passing it. Um, but then again, I do see that big scorch mark in that contact, which suggests that something has potential. Oh, and you know what? That pad does go up to uh, the that area. Hold on. Let's get the uh, continuity test in again. So is that going to be the positive, or? Oh, that is the positive. Oh, you know what? I think it is that. I think that has bridged out there onto the metal in here, where that's machined down like that, and that's where it's shorted out. It has then basically shorted out the, the circuit board. It's not great that there's no polarity protection, and no obvious indication which way the battery goes round. But in this instance, I would say that my primary suspect here, suspicion, is that uh, this uh, circuit board has just touched, one of these contacts has touched onto that uh, aluminium and it's just effectively created a dead short between the positive and the other end through the circuit board. And that's been enough to upset the battery considerably. But uh, not great. I'm not going to use the other one of these because having seen how it's made now, I've lost confidence in the design of that. It's not very good.